أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله والحمد حقه كما يستحقه حمدا كثيرا وأعوذ به من شر نفسي إن النفس لأمارة بالسوء إلا ما رحم ربي والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين السلام عليك سيدي ومولاي يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم وهو أحسن القائلين وأصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بقية الله خير لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم for the purification of the souls the enlightenment of the hearts for the acceptance of the deeds and for the hastening of the reappearance of the awaited savior Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif, enlighten your souls, purify your hearts, and the atmosphere with the recitation of salawat upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. <laughs> Respected elders, sisters, and brothers in Islam, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala wa Barakatuh. This is one of the five definitive signs of the reappearance of the awaited savior it is discussed extensively in hadith literature both in the sunni and the shia world and its study is important in order to analyze and have a clear understanding of the movement of the holy 12th imam the sufyani is a term given to the rise of a particular individual that is considered to be one of the five signs of the reappearance of Al Mahdi Al Muntavar, Ajallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. There are many times in our lives where people have been told there are signs of the reappearance of the Imam. It's an incredibly exciting subject for many people. Often you see when there is a trend that occurs around the world. For example, when there was a rise of this so-called Islamic State, the Daesh, many people came forward and said, is this a sign of the reappearance of the Imam? Sometimes you see occurrences like earthquakes, for, ex for instance. You see natural disasters. And there are those who come forward and associate this to be one of the alamat al dhuhur one of the signs. This discussion is key. The Sufyani is considered to be one of those definitive signs. Meaning what? Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. 
in a narration says قبل قيام القائم خمس علامات حتميات before the twelfth imam rises and establishes his uprising there are five definite signs that will occur these five some of you may come across for some it may be the first time that they cut they actually hear them he says al yamani and the sufyani and khasf al bayda was sayha wa qatl al nafs zakiya we will discuss this in a minute but you recognize this is important why because today you and i are considered to be those who are muntazirin waiting actively for the eventual reappearance of the awaited savior there are those who ask the question as a believer and as a follower of imam al mahdi alayhi salam at this time where i am considered somebody who is waiting for his reappearance what do i have to do what are my responsibilities what are my duties what is it that makes me of those whom the 12th imam is pleased with me without a shadow of a doubt there are a number of things for instance we are told to remember him how to perform a'mal on his behalf some of the maraja have said to recite rak'atain salah after fajr and to give this to the imam alayhi salam is highly recommended and it's a practice that we have seen ulama fuqaha maraji do themselves to remember him in giving sadaqa to perform ziyara on his behalf to do hajj and umrah on his behalf if it is mustahab all these are one of the ways in which you and i are what remembering the imam of our time keeping him constantly in our minds another key feature of an individual who is actively waiting and following the commands of the holy prophet rasul al-a'zam muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have you come across the hadith that says afdalu a'malu ummati intidharu al-faraj the best thing you and i can do is to be actively waiting for the faraj meaning for the reappearance of the imam one of the things that we are told we can do in this particular regard is what is to know the imam what do you mean know the imam we have the hadith that is highly encouraged for you and i to constantly remind ourselves because the hadith says you and i should recite the following dua on a continuous basis allahumma arifni nafsak fa in lam tu'arifni nafsak lam a'ruf rasulak oh allah i need the cognizance the deep understanding of you because if you don't then i will not understand and have ma'rifa of whom your prophet is allahumma arifni rasulak fa in lam tu'arifni rasulak lam a'ruf hujjatak i need that cognizance of your messenger because without it i will not understand who your representative is now allahumma arifni hujjatak fa in lam tu'arifni hujjatak dhalaltu an dini if i don't know o oh allah your hujja then i have deviated from my religion therefore the ma'rifa of the hujja is of the utmost importance someone asks how do i increase my ma'rifa of the imam of our time how do i do it one of the ways to do it is to study aspects related to him quranic verses related to him for example a hadith that are established related to him and one of those areas is to have a better understanding of the signs of reappearance why because unfortunately this is a study or an area which has included some fabrications today you will find a extensive range of ahadith and narrations that tell you about signs of the reappearance i remember for example when this country had the president by the name of barack obama yes i remember there were people who circulated online that there is a hadith that says that at the time of the reappearance of the imam there will be a leader who will have a name that will be similar to hussein or hussein and many people came and said oh barak hussein obama so it must be the time now yes there is a hadith that says that the close to the reappearance of the imam there'll be a king who will be called abdullah and he will die when the king of saudi by the name of abdullah died they said oh 
That's it. This is it. Now we are there. Yes. The problem is many times people use conjecture, use your, or their own whims to interpret these ahadith and they come and spread. They come and say this person is Khurasani, this person is the Yamani, this person perhaps is the Sufyani. Therefore, the study of the signs of the reappearance objectively from the viewpoint of our fuqaha and ulama is of the utmost importance. Why? Because it's needed for the ma'rifah, at least some degree of cognizance of the imam of our time. And it's therefore quite essential and quite important. Imam Zain al-Abideen al-Sajjad, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. says you and i should be proud that we are living at this time listen to this beautiful narration he says those who are at the time of the ghayba and who believe the imam is the true representative of allah those who are waiting actively notice the active part not just and i'm sitting at home and not doing anything the imam السلام, says زمان, akbar. they are better than the people of any other time they are aware of their duties and responsibilities but part of this is what the sixth holy imam comes forward and elaborates he says if you want to be from the ashab of the awaited qa'im فَلْيَنْتَظِرُوا Wait by what? لِيَعْمَلْ بِالْوَرَعِ وَمَحَاسِنُ الْأَخْلَاقِ Improve your akhlaq. Be of those who practice wara' meaning taqwa, the highest degrees of God consciousness. فَإِنْ مَاتْ But if you die in the state of waiting for the imam whilst improving your akhlaq and at the same time being God conscious, Imam alayhi salam says, if you die and there is the occurrence of the reappearance of the Imam, you will attain the thawab of whomsoever stood with him and supported him. These things are encouraging for you and I, because some people say, what happens if I die and don't get to meet the awaited Savior? Do I get the same reward? As long as you and I are observing and are cognizant of what we can do at this time, there is great potential for you and I. The subject of Sufyani is a very intriguing subject. Why? Because certainly it needs to be looked at to highlight how this particular event is portrayed in hadith literature. Because you ask me, you say, okay, there are these five definitive signs. Are there any other signs other than these five? The subject tonight is very heavy. Warning. It's very heavy. It includes many narrations and it requires your attention. Why? Because you will come across signs and you wonder, is this true? Is this going to happen or not? The ulama categorize the signs of the reappearance of the imam to three categories. Number one, there are the signs that occur due to immorality and trends in society. These are considered the signs of the end of time and the reappearance of the imam because somehow they are both intertwined. Because when you see some of the signs, they say to you, these are signs of the end of time, before the day of Qiyamah. Surely, of course, these are also the signs for the reappearance of the Imam Ali salam. You ask me like what? Amir al mu'minin wa Imam al muttaqin Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi wa He says, you know what will happen before the Imam will reappear? He says, إِذَا مَا أَمَاتَ النَّاسُ الصَّلَاةِ They will take prayers lightly. People will no longer be trustworthy. And lying will be easy. People will lie frequently. And interest will be practiced extensively. And they'll sell their religion and in return get more worldly pleasures. And they no longer visit or care about their blood relatives salatul raham ahwa and they follow their desires the next one is scary imam says and men will look like women and women will look like men imam ali is saying these are signs these are what you will find to be signs of immorality that will occur by the end of time just before or 
at least some time before the Imams alayhi salam's reappearance and advent. That's one category of signs. Yes. Second category of signs are what? Are those that will occur very close to the reappearance of the Imam. Someone asks, does this mean that we will know when the Imam reappear? No. According to many of our ulama and fuqaha, even the 12th Imam doesn't know when he will reappear. This is something that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, yes? And anyone who predicts, and anyone who says this is the time where the Imam will reappear, is a liar, according to the riwayat. The second category of signs are what? Are those that will occur perhaps a year or two, or very close to the reappearance of the Imam. These are included in hadith. For example, the wall of Masjid al-Kufa will collapse. Secondly, there will be black flags that will rise from Khurasan. Thirdly, there will be 60 liars who will claim that they are prophets. Fourthly, Kufa will be engulfed with water due to the rise of the Furat. These are all from Riwayat of Ahl al-Bayt. These are specific signs, we are told, that may occur before the Imam salam's reappearance. But the third type and the category of the signs are known as non-definitive and definitive. What do we mean? Non-definitive means there are those narrations that says there will be an increase in earthquakes, there will be eclipses which are unexpected, for example. Ulama say these may or may not happen because it's the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He either will make them happen or not, but amongst them there are five which are definite and they will definitely happen. Because Sahih Riwayat we have say these must occur before the Imam alayhi salam announces his uprising. These five you and I need to know. Today I was to ask the Mu'mineen here and the Mu'minat, tell me of the five signs that you must know about the Imam alayhi salam. Many will struggle. Let's look at them and be able to understand them before examining Sufyani. Because it's a very interesting subject as to who is Sufyani. The first sign that we are told that is definite in the riwayat of the Ahl al-Bayt is what? Is a sayha. There will be a scream. What is the scream? It's a scream that will be made by Jibra'il and will be heard by everyone around the world. It will declare the reappearance of the Imam alayhi salam. The truth will be announced. This sayha is definitive. It is a sign that will occur without shadow of a doubt. The second sign is the killing of a man who is known as the nafsu zakiyya, the pure soul. Who is this individual? According to riwayat, he is a descendant of Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam. He will be killed when? He will be killed approximately 15 days before or after the first time people see the Imam alayhi salam. This particular individual will be killed next to the Kaaba between the Maqam of Ibrahim and the Black Stone. And he is known as the pure soul. He will be slaughtered there. The third sign, which is definitive before the reappear or before the uprising of the Imam, is what? Is the idea of what is known as the Yamani rising. Who is the Yamani? Tonight you will hear many terms. Yamani, Khurasani, the Nafs al Zakiya, Sufyani. You think, my God, all these E ending with E, they're all similar. But you and I need to focus so that you can distinguish between them. Yamani is who? We're told a Yamani is a man from Yemen. Our riwayat in the school of Ahl al Bayt don't describe who he is as much. The riwayat of our brothers, the Ahl al-Sunnah, give him a little bit more details. They call him, for example, some call him Abdullah, his name is Abdullah. Some say he's Qahtani, he's from the area of Qahtan in Yemen. Regardless, we believe that this Yamani is who? Is a person who's called Al-Mansur, he's given the title Al-Mansur. He is a supporter of the 12th Imam. He will call people to Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. He will rise at the same time as the Sufyani and the Khurasani. I'll come in a minute to describe who these people are. But these three, they will rise at the same time. They'll be known at the same time in the world. Yes. And he will come from Yemen. Now, today there is a man by the name of Ahmed al-Hassan. 
Some of you may have come across. This Ahmed al Hassan has a cult group, has a group that exists in Europe, exists, I think, here in the United States, in different parts of the Middle East. He says, I am the Yamani. He claims that he is the Yamani and he is the supporter of the 12th Imam. That claim is rejected because it is baseless and because at the same time he does not fulfill those conditions and certainly not in accordance with the riwayat of the Ahlal Bayt. So that's what, that's the third definitive sign. I hope now you know which ones are they. Sayha is one, the killing of the pure soul is second, the rise of the Yamani is third, the fourth and the fifth are related to whom? To the Sufyani. The fourth is the swallowing of the earth in an area known as Bayda, Khasful Bayda. And the fifth is the rise of the Sufyani. Let's look at these two in detail, particularly the Sufyani, because they're both related in an investigation to elaborate and brings us closer to these signs of reappearance by answering the following questions. Number one, the Sufyani, what is his name? What is his family background? What is his religion? Number two, what does he do? What is his mission? What is his purpose? Number three, what's his story? According to Riwayat, he is definitely going to come. What is it about him? Number four, how will he be dealt with by the 12th Holy Imam? What are the challenges that we see in Riwayat happening? Number five, how does the revolution of the Imam السلام, somehow continue the mission of his grandfather, Sayyid al-Shuhada, Aba Abdullah al-Hussein, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. When it comes to this particular concept of Sufyani, there are those who've come forward and said, yes, it's there in Riwayat, but it doesn't refer to a human being. It refers to a movement. Why? Because we have also the term of what? Dajjal. You've come across Dajjal. Dajjal is also a concept that is found in narrations. And today we find that Dajjal is described as following. is described as, for example, an individual who deceives and appears at the time of hardship and starvation. Dajjal, according to Sunni literature, is skillful in magic. He's sealed in one eye. The other eye is in the middle of his face. Yes? And it's full of a blood clot. So he's like one-eyed. This is what is presented as the Dajjal. And he works hard to deceive. Some call him the Antichrist. Yes? The idea behind Dajjal is they say that he will fight Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam and he will be there at the time of the Imam. Some have suggested, hold on, maybe Dajjal is not a human being but a movement. Maybe Dajjal is a system that seeks to deceive, manipulate, that seeks to control people. And this is an interesting idea. However, we have narrations that describe the physical features of Dajjal. How do we deal with those? There are those who have suggested that the system of Dajjal exists today. But later, there is a man who will come and he will be embodying that particular belief through a human being, through a particular what physical form. Similarly, Sufyani, there are those who have said these signs of narration, these signs of reappearance, they're not necessarily exactly literal. They are metaphorical. So we have narrations that says the Imam will come with a sword. Really? The sword at this time? So some say this is a metaphor for a weapon, that Imam Ali salam will use a weapon. Yes, Sword was something that was used at that time. So there is a suggestion that Sufyani is not a human being. The Sufyani is what? The Sufyani is a movement. But there is a problem with this suggestion. Why? Because the details given in Hadith literature of Sunni and Shia about this human being are quite extensive. We can't ignore them. There is so much that is given about his physical features, about his body, about his name and family lineage. We can't what, just ignore. So who is the Sufyani? Sufyani is a man that has a name. According to Shia narrations, his name is Uthman. According to Sunni narrations, his name is Abdullah. Importantly, Muslims today agree, Sunni and Shia, that he is from Bani Umayyah and is a descendant from Abu Sufyan, hence the name Sufyani. 
Sufyani is a descendant from the sons of Abu Sufyan. Question, which son? Some say Utbah. Abu Sufyan had a son by the same name of Utbah. And he had sons until what? A Sufyani. Others say no. He is what? A great grandson of Muawiyah. The son of Abu Sufyan. Therefore, immediately what emerges? The first thing that you should now know is Sufyani, a human being who is from the cursed tree in the Quran, Shajaratul Mal'una fil Quran. What do you think his main objective in this life would be? What do you think he wants to do? According to Riwayat, his main aim would be to stand against the Ahl al Bayt and their followers. His main objective in this existence would be to fight the Shia as well as the Imam of the time. And therefore you find that Riwayat project him in the form of an individual who is brutal, who is bloodthirsty, who is violent, who is aggressive, who is an individual who wants to kill, shed blood, behead. He is depicted as an individual who would boil children in oil, yes, boiling oil, he would place children, as we will describe, yes, amongst the narrations that present who the Sufyani is. What is interesting about this particular individual is the fact that we are told in the riwayat of the Ahl al Bayt that he is an extension of those who are enemies of the Ahl al Bayt. Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. He says, Anna wa abi wa ala abi Sufyan ahlu baytain ta'adayna. Imam Sadiq says, me and the family of Abu Sufyan are two families. We're always been at war. Imam al Hussein on the plains of Karbala, what did he say? Ya Shia ta'ala abi Sufyan. He called them the Shia of the family of Abu Sufyan. Imam al Sadiq says, our family and the family of Abu Sufyan have always been confronting imam says ta'adayna fillah we are fighting as to who represents allah yes then qunna sadaqallah imam alayhi salam says we ahl al-bayt say allah is truthful qalu kadhab allah they say allah is a liar then qatala abu sufyan rasulullah imam sadiq says abu sufyan fought rasulullah wa qatala muawiya ali ibn abi talib وقاتل يزيد حسين بن علي وسوف يقاتل السفياني القائم. So Imam Sadiq here in the narration says Abu Sufyan fought the Prophet, Muawiyah fought Amir al Mu'minin, Yazid fought Hussein, and the Sufyani will fight the twelfth Imam. The clear recognition at the outset is that he is an enemy of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhim salam, Amir al-Mu'mineen. And there's so many riwayat about Sufyan, he's incredible. If you delve into this area, you'll find riwayat from Amir al-Mu'mineen, from Imam al-Baqir, from Imam al-Sadiq. The Ahl al-Bayt wanted you and I to know about this man. There is a reason, yes, that we should be aware of his existence or about the existence of the narrations regarding him, yes? So, what do we find? We find that Imam Ali Salam gives a description of his. He says, Wahshul Wajah. He is like a monster in his face. Yes. Vahmul Hama, he's quite huge as a body is concerned. Biwajhi atharu jadri. And his face is full of spots, like he has full acne. And he has one eye. So some people confuse him with the Dajjal, but he's completely different. So different entity, different individual. This is whom? The Sufyani, yes. What happens? What is the religion of Sufyani? What is the Sufyani's religion? We are told that he initially, when he first emerges, and he lives for the next 15 months, he rises in Rajab. In the month of Rajab, according to Ruwayat, Sufyani makes him himself clear. He lives for 15 months. But what does he do afterwards? He will declare that he's a Muslim. He will say that I am a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he's not. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam says, Ma abad Allahu qat. He's lying. He's deceiving people. He never worshipped Allah ever. Other narration says he will carry a cross. Yes? And so on. But 
Imam Ali Salam as Sadiq says, what? He says, when he will rise, his main objective will be to find the Shia and to kill them. For example, the hadith says, Ka'anni bis Sufyani fil Kufa. I could see the Sufyani in Kufa, Imam as Sadiq says. Fanada, Munadi. He will call out anyone who brings me the head. Bira'sin min Shi'ati Ali falahu alfu dirham. Anyone who brings me the head of a Shia of Ali, I would give them 1,000 what dirhams. And so you recognize the Imam Ali Salams have presented this individual at the outset. Let's have a look and investigate after knowing his name or some of his features about what he does. How is he going to necessarily establish himself and what are the things that he will do, yes? The first thing that we are told is that he will rise where? In Khurasan, in Sham. And when he rises, there is a man at the same time who will rise in Khurasan. His name is Khurasani. Who is the Khurasani? We are told the Khurasani is a person who gives bay'ah eventually to Imam of our time. Al-Mahdi al-Muntadhar al-Qa'im min Ali Muhammad Ajjar Allahu Ta'ala Faraja. This Khurasani, we don't know much about him except that on his right hand he will have a sign. Some sign to show that he is the Khurasani. He will rise with the black flags from Khurasan, modern day Mashhad, that area. What happens was is that he will eventually support the 12th Imam and he will later fight the Sufyani. The Khurasani, the Yamani, and the Sufyani will all be evidently seen in the world at the same day, according to Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. They will all rise on the same day. Now, Sham, this is not modern day Syria. This includes a larger region, Jordan, for example, Palestine, and so on. This man, the Sufyani, what would he do? He would try to gather support for his movement in Sham. He would do what? He would go and revolt against the government of that time, calling for justice, calling for reform, but he has a mission. He knows that he has to kill the Shia. That's his objective around the area, around the region. And he believes that he will eventually fight the 12th Imam. And so he wants to kill. What he would do is gather support for his uprising in Sham. The Riwayat tell us eventually he will become successful. But at the initial stages he's afraid, he hides. And he kills his own wife in the fear that she will disclose his location. So in Sham, in that area, he is hiding. There is turmoil. There is an uprising that this individual has staged. And so as a result... He is preparing for his particular movement. He advocates liberal values. He says Islam is too difficult. Let's make it easier. People begin to be attracted to him. They begin to be drawn towards his teachings. Why? Because he simplifies matters. And he begins to say, you know what? Islam is not like this. You are complicating Islam. It's much simpler than this. Notice, there are similarities of what's happening today. Perhaps the seeds for Sufyani are being planted in the Western world. Once he begins to convince people, he will establish himself as the ruler of that region in Sham. He will eventually become what? The person who controls that region through a popular uprising. And what would happen is that he would then rule with an iron fist. He would be quite what? A brutal ruler. Amir al muminin says, as soon as this happens, there will be a natural disaster in that area. By the way, Sufyani as a concept is definitive. The details I'm describing today, ulama say may or may not occur. Please make a differentiation between them. They say that these are present in a hadith and they are being told to us, but it may be possible that there is bada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may change it. Yes, they exist in riwayat, but Sufyani will definitely happen. But these details may not 
occur. We are told, Amir al-Mu'mineen says, at that moment when he establishes his government in Sham, there will be a plague and a huge earthquake, Rajfa. A hundred thousand people will die. How many? A hundred thousand people will die in that region. This will cause the followers of Sufyani to lose trust in him. And there will be a rise of three different groups who will fight each other in that region. Some of them belonging to him, supporting him, others not. Eventually, though, he will create fiction and fitna amongst them in order to control everything again. So he will regain power in that region. What will happen is he will have a huge PR machine to deceive people. He will constantly say, I am following the truth. Listen to me. Understand what I am doing. There is a concept today known as soft power. You may have come across it. There is soft power and there is hard power. Hard power is the use of weapons, machinery. Soft power is the subtle convincing of the masses through messages, through certain, for example, presentations, through concepts that slowly begin to be embedded in the people's lives, presented in the media and social media, where, where it becomes accepted and nobody else wants to debate it. Soft power today is a common term in political theory. Everybody uses it. They say it's much more cost-effective than hard power. If you want to control large masses of people, you use soft power. Yes? Soft power is used by lobbies. Today there are groups you can't even criticize. There are countries you can't even talk about the human rights abuses. Because they have huge lobbies in certain parts of the world. There are movements, so-called sexual orientations, that today you can't talk about because all of a sudden you'll be blamed. You'll be attacked, you'll be considered a homophobe, and so on. These, how, how did this happen? Was somebody came and placed a knife on your neck and said, accept them? No. Gradually through time, the perception in your mind about these particular practices changed. And whilst people began to accept them through a mass movement of soft power, any criticism is now unacceptable. And this is being also affecting our children. Look at the stuff they are given in schools and colleges as far as what? Books and stories. Look at the movies, Hollywood, for example, and Disney. Look at what's included in it. You are naive if you think there isn't a movement to ensure that the children are brainwashed to what? To accept this particular trend. It's happening everywhere. Yes, and many parents are concerned. But this is part of the strategy of what? Of the Sufyani. Sufyani will do the same thing to control that particular region, isn't it? Once he is in control of that region, according to Riwayat, there will be a massive, massive battle, a war that will take place. Listen to this. Please focus on this so that you have an understanding of this movement. There's an area known as Qarqisiya. Qarqisiyya in Riwayat is mentioned as an area which will stage this massive battle that will take place between the army of Sufyani in Sham and between other Jabbarin. The Riwayat says, the Riwayat says, ignorant or arrogant people from around the world. They will hold an army and they will fight the Sufyani. The Riwayat inform us that these will include an army from Turkey, an army from Rome, there will be a person by the name of Qais, who is the ruler of Egypt, will also join this particular army. And there will be a man by the name of Abdullah, who will have an army that will support the army of Rome. I don't need to tell you what Rome means. Yes. These will come together to fight the army of Sufyani in an area which is where, which is found in the borders between Syria and Iraq today, called Qarqisiyya. Yes, Imams alayhi salam used to ask people, where are you from? And once Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam saw a man, he said to him, are you from Qarqisiyya? He said, yes. He said, let me tell you what will happen one day in your area. There will be a massive battle and a huge bloodshed that the world has barely seen. Anything like this. According to Riwayat, 100,000 people will be killed. Just to note though, when it says 100,000 people, it could be more. 
because it's a term that's given somehow abstract uh, to indicate a huge slaughter of human beings. Who will be victorious? The Sufyani. The Sufyani will win. The Sufyani will declare victory in that area of Qarqisiya, where he will fight these particular groups that have come together to stop him. Where is he going to head to next? Iraq. His objective now is to go to the region of what? Of Iraq. And the Riwayat refer to Kufa, but Kufa is a name given to what? To that particular region altogether. He will move with a huge army. That particular army that he will move to includes 70,000 soldiers. 70,000 soldiers of Sufyani's army will now go to that particular region. When they enter cities like Kufa or Najaf, they will begin a systematic killing of the Shia. Anyone with a Shia name will be beheaded. Riwayat tell us that they will torture anyone who's Shia. They will place heads next to the mosques. They will burn books, destroy mosques. They will kill children. They will enslave women. And what would happen then is what? Is that there will be extensive bloodshed and massacre in that region. In what? In the region in Iraq. The brutality is such. The riwayah from one of the Ahl al-Bayt says, Yuslabu ala baab masjid al-Kufa tiflain. On the door of Masjid al-Kufa, two children will be crucified. Ismahuma Hassanun wa Hussein. Their names will be Hassan and Hussein. But what will happen a bit later on is that their bloods will boil and erupt. Just like how the blood of Prophet Yahya, John the Baptist, would erupt as a sign of the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we'll come to that later. This man, Sufyani, now decides. I have fought the Shia and killed many of them. Where? In Iraq. Next place to go is where? Hijaz. Modern day Saudi. He sends an army now. How big is this army? Riwayat say 100,000. But I have seen some narration says 300,000. 300,000. The Sufyani is now sending towards where? Madinatul Munawwara. When the army is coming towards Medina, we are told that is when the Imam of our time, Al Mahdi Al Muntadar, Ajjar Allah Ta'ala Farajah Al Sharif. Will then be seen. There is the Zuhur. Now, please understand. There is a difference between Zuhur Al Imam and Qiyam Al Imam. Imam Ali Salam, we are told there will be the Sayha. That will occur on a Thursday night, Laylatul Jumu'ah, the eve of the 23rd of Ramadan, according to Riwayat. 23rd of Ramadan is when this sound will be heard and what people will know that the Imam has reappeared. But his actual uprising, his declaration of his movement will be made on the day of Ashura. So there is a gap. Between when people will see the Imam and when he will actually declare his uprising. So the army is now coming from Kufa, from Iraq to Medina. Imam Ali Salam is now in Medina, the 12th Imam. When he's in Medina, he hears of the army approaching. The Riwayat tell us due to the need to protect his life, he leaves Medina and goes to Mecca. Similar to what Imam Al Hussein Ali Salam did. The army arrive in Medina. For three days they desecrate it. They desecrate the city. They attack the grave of the Prophet of Islam. They kill people, but they specifically look for any people who are Shia. Their objective is to kill the Shia. To kill the followers of Ahl al-Bayt. The riwayah says, يَقْتُلُونَ كُلًّا مَنْ إِسْمُهُ مُحَمَّدْ وَفَاطِمَةْ وَيُصْلِبُونَهُمْ عَلَى بَابِ الْمَسْجِدِ They will crucify people and place them, anyone whose name is Muhammad, anyone whose name is Fatima, anyone whose name is Ali, Hassan, Hussein, they place them, crucify them on the bab, on the door of Masjid al-Nabawi. And the other masajid in Medina. There is extensive brutality. 
that takes place in the city of Rasulullah. You ask me, is this the first time that's happened? No. You say to me, when? He said, today, when there are those who discuss the 10th of Muharram, they talk about Yazid's criminal action in killing the grandson of the Prophet. But they often, yes, do not necessarily associate or come together to present the extensive crimes of Yazid ibn Muawiyah. Because Yazid ibn Muawiyah also attacked Medina for three days. He desecrated Medina in a battle known as Battle of Harra. Yes, it happened in the year 63 after Hijra. There was the killing of so many of the Prophet's companions. There was the raping of at least a thousand women. One thousand illegit illegitimate children were born after Yazid's army invaded and desecrated the sanctity of the city of Medina. And then he went to Kaaba, Mecca, and you know what he did there. Yes, he used the catapults and he destroyed the Kaaba. Surprising that today we have many who have respect for this man. Incredible. If you do not have respect for the family of the Holy Prophet, at least have respect for the cities of Medina and Mecca. How can an individual stand there and say, Ravi Allahu, after mentioning Yazid? I have, I, I, it sometimes baffles you that if you do not have respect for Hussein, have respect for the family, for the cities of the Prophet and the Mecca that this man himself desecrated. What other crime Yazid needs to commit for the Muslim Ummah to come together and stand against him? I don't know. I don't know. And somehow you read these riwayat about the Sufyani and you think, will there be people supporting him? Yes. There will be people who are claiming to be Muslims supporting him. And somehow before Daesh we found it difficult to accept this. But Allahu Akbar. This criminal, yes, thugs who killed indiscriminately, you and I look at their crimes, and now we begin to understand how people can behead the grandson of the Holy Prophet only 50 years after the Prophet left this world. And now we begin to understand this moment of Sufyani, because if there are people willing to join the likes of Daesh, there will be people who will join the Sufyani. The Sufyani will not come to Medina. He stays in Kufa. He stays in Iraq. His army comes to Medina, desecrated, kill many people, at least 3,000, according to the riwayat. Then what happens? They move. They move towards Mecca. Who are they looking for? The 12th Imam. They're looking for Imam al-Bahdi. The objective is to kill him. Now, this is where one of the definitive signs of the reappearance of the Imam happens. What is that called? Al-Khasf bil bayda the earth swallowing in the area known as Bayda. Where is Bayda? Bayda is just outside Medina. Some narrations say it's a mile away from Masjid al-Shajara. Those of you who've been to Hajj, they know Masjid al-Shajara is a miqat. People wear the ihram there to go to Mecca, right? Some riwayat say it's about a mile away. I think it's a bit longer, right? So outside Medina, there is a desert known as Bayda. This army is there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands Jibra'il. Riwayah says he spreads his wings, metaphorically and would say, oh desert, swallow these people. All of them will be killed except two who will remain alive. Al-Khasif bil Bayda. This is one of the five definitive signs. Definitely it will happen. The entire army of Sufyani will die except two people. One is called Bashir and one is called Nadir. The riwaya says that these two, what? One of them, by the name of Bashir, will come to Mecca. He will meet the Imam Ajr Allah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif and would say to him, I've come to you to tell you of the news of what happened. But this man looks a bit unusual. His face is what turned, where it's upside. So he is standing like this, but his face is the other way. And he speaks to the Imam and says to him, this is what I saw. I saw in my own eyes the earth opening up and swallowing these people. They all died, Thou hundreds of thousands of them. They all died before my own eyes. And we heard a cry and we heard the Malaika saying, you, in other words me, Bashir, go to the awaited Savior and say to him, this has happened. And you, Nadir, go back to whom? To the Sufyani. And say to the Sufyani that the army of yours has been completely destroyed by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, he asks the Imam for Tawbah. He says to him, is there any way for you to accept me? I am sorry that I joined the army of Sufyani. 
and I perpetrated crimes. He said that we killed, we destroyed mosques, we burnt books, and now I've come to you for Tawbah. The Imam Ali Salam would say to him, yes, I accept your Tawbah, and you are forgiven, insha'Allah. Now, what happens? This is, according to Riwayat, about a month before the Qiyam of the Imam Alayhi Salam. This happens approximately a month before the announcement of the uprising of the Imam. What happens next? We are told when this Nadir comes to Kufa, he says to Sufyani, this is what happened. Sufyani becomes hysterical becomes angry, he starts to drink more alcohol, he starts to commit adultery, asks people on the streets, rape people, yes, he loses his mind. Now, he then decides to leave Kufa, according to Riwayat, he decides to leave Kufa because of a number of reasons. Number one, he's scared. He's heard what's happened, signs in front of him, he leaves Kufa. Some say he now decides to go back to Sham. Some say, no, there was resistance against him. Actually, we have riwayat that now the Khurasani and the Yamani, Yamani comes from Yemen, Khurasani from Khurasan, have come to Kufa and have pushed him away. So he now retracts from Kufa, retracts from Iraq, heading towards where? Sham, heading towards his place. In the meantime, Imam of our time, may Allah hasten his reappearance, according to Riwayat, heads towards him with a huge army. Heads towards Iraq and specifically Kufa, because Kufa will be the center of his governance. He will come to Kufa now. Now you know why we say Masjid al-Kufa is a place where he will govern. His house will be where? Masjid al-Sahla, according to Riwayat. So he will head to that region, in order to fight Sufyani. The riwayat tell us that what happens, that he, Sufyani, begins to what? Be told that the Imam is coming with a huge army. He is deflated. He has lost most of his soldiers after the Khesf of Bayda. Now, some of people tell him, why don't you claim that you repent and then maybe you'll be forgiven? There are some riwayat that claim that he wanted repentance but falsely, irrespective. Imam Ali Salam meets him in an area outside Kufa. Now this area, according to Riwayat, is called Iliya. Iliya. In, in further investigation, some have said Iliya could be Baytul Maqdis, Palestine. Some have said no, it's a region just outside Kufa. There is a discussion among scholars exactly where the final battle will take place. And this wretched individual will be killed by the Imam salam. His army will be completely defeated. Anyone who's left will be what? Will be defeated by the Imam salam. And what? There is the a declaration of the victory by the awaited savior. Ajallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif. Final point to discuss in this particular understanding of Sufyani is this. Some people say, why is this the case? Why is it that always we have people who will rise and want to kill Shias? It's been the case for 1400 years, isn't it? Ahl al-Bayt themselves predicted this. Imam Amir al muminin someone came to him and said, Yabna Rasulillah, ana, ana min shi'atikum. I am one of your Shia. Imam said to him, Ista'iddu lil bala. Be prepared for hardship. Yes? Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, what does he say? Inna amrana sa'abun mustas'ab. You want to be our followers? Don't think you're going to have an easy life. Clear message for you and I. Yes? You think around the world, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Yemen, in Syria, in Iraq, in those places where the Shia have been slaughtered for years and years, for no other reason except their love for Ali ibn Abi Talib. Do you think this is just now? You and I know 1400 years, there's been a concerted effort to spread the, stop the light of Ali Muhammad. But the problem with these people is, they have not heard the cries of that lady in the courtyard of Yazid. Because when Sayyidah Zainab stood defiantly with valor and courage and said, Fakid kaydak wa sa'yak wa nasib juhdak, fa wallahi la tamhu dhikrana. You could plot, 
You could deceive, but by Allah, you will never obliterate our remembrance. You will never stop people following us. You and anyone else. You or Daesh or Sufyani. Yes? The being the follower of Ali Muhammad has its costs, has its responsibilities, but has its challenges. And we wear the badge of being the followers of Ahl al-Bayt with pride and honor. Yes, they slaughter us around the world, but they can never stop the light of the Ahl al-Bayt. That is why when we remember Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, there is that resemblance, isn't it? There is that connection with Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. Some people say, what's the connection? I tell you, 15 Sha'ban. What is the, one of the most recommended deeds on 15 Sha'ban, the day of the anniversary of the Wilad of Imam? Is Ziyarat al Hussein, isn't it? How many times we hear that Aina Talib Bidam al Maktuli bi Karbala? Where is the one who will avenge the blood of the one who is slaughtered in Karbala? We are told when the Imam will rise, he will say the following. He will say, Allah ya ahl al alam, ana al imam al qa'im. Oh, the people of the world, I am the Imam who has risen. Allah ya ahl al alam, ana jaddi al Hussein qutila atshana. O oh, people of the world, my grandfather Hussein was slaughtered, but slaughtered thirsty. Allah ya ahl al alam, ana jaddi al Hussein sahakuhu adwana. O oh, people of the world, my grandfather Hussein was trampled upon. Imam will make this declaration when he will announce his uprising. And that's why on the day of Ashura, what do we recite? And even outside the day of Ashura, in Ziyarat Ashura, we say, أَنْ يَرْزُقَنِي طَلَبَ ثَأْرِكَ مَعَ إِمَامٍ مَنْصُورٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتِ نبيك. We pray to Allah, we say, Ya Allah, allow me to serve the 12th Imam, allow me to stand alongside him when he is seeking vengeance for the sacrifice and the blood of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. But I tell you, in the world today, each and every one of us has a special connection with Imam al Hussein, with Abu al Fadl al Abbas, with Sayyida Zainab, with all the Shuhada of Karbala. We remember them year after year. We cry, we shed the tears, we beat our chests. But there is no man or woman, there is no human being who cries for Hussein like the awaited Savior. There is no one who remembers him like the twelfth Imam. Imam Al Mahdi says, Oh my grandfather, I couldn't be with you. I couldn't help you, I couldn't support you, but there is one thing that I will do. I will mourn for you every day in the morning and at night. But I will not shed normal tears for you, Ya Hussein. I will weep tears of blood for you, Ya Aba Abdullah. You and I want to be Ansarul Mahdi, isn't it? We want to be the companions of the Imam of our time. Allahu Akbar. Imam al Hussein says, There are no companions like my companions. Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam in Ziyaratun Nahi al Muqaddasa, according to the Riwaya, mentions a number of the companions of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, praises them, talks about their bravery, their sacrifice. These companions are special. These companions sacrificed everything for the sake of Allah. They embraced Shahada and martyrdom wholeheartedly. How amazing! were the Sahaba of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Can you imagine they never complained? Can you imagine they never objected? Can you imagine they were smiling on the day of Ashura, embracing the sweet elixir of martyrdom? People like, for example, Zuhair ibn al Qain, people like Burair, people like Abis, this man Abis. Incredible, this individual. Abis was a great scholar in Kufa, a person whom Amir al Mu'mineen said, I wish I had a number of people like him. Abis comes forward on the day of Ashura. Do you know how he comes to fight? He comes by removing his outer garment, his veil, his shield. They say to him, Our Abis, a are you crazy? 
He says, Hubbul Husseini ajannani. The love of Hussein has made me crazy. Allahu Akbar. Each and every one of them has a story. Yes, each and every one of them wants you and I to connect to them, to what they stood for. If you ask me about John, I tell you about John. If you ask me about Muslim ibn Ausaja, there are lessons from Muslim ibn Ausaja. That man who was a Christian, yes, Wahab, when you ask me about him, you find that he struggled. What way did he struggle? His wife was against him. His wife did not want to lose him. He had just got married. She asked him, please don't make me a widow. But imagine when you're struggling against your soul, but you're also struggling against other human beings. It's even harder to sacrifice your life. What monumental achievement did Wahab gain, isn't it? Because Allahu Akbar, when he stood on the battlefield, he heard his wife say, Oh Wahab, Wahab, fight and kill the disbelievers. Fight and protect Rasulullah's family. Now he wonders, a few minutes ago, my wife is telling me, please don't go. Now she's telling me, go and fight. He returns back. He has to find out. He has to ask, why have you changed your mind? She looks at him and she says, the cries of Hussein broke my heart. Allahu Akbar. What was the cries of Aba Abdullah? She says, when he said, is there anyone to help us? Is there anyone to defend us? Is there anyone to protect us? That broke my heart. I could no longer bear hearing the cries of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. That's why Wahab goes and gets martyrdom. These individuals all attain martyrdom. But tonight we remember one man. Yes, one man who is beloved to Aba Abdullah. One man beloved to Ahl al Bayt. When you go to Karbala, when you go to Ziyar of Imam al Hussein, what do you find? You find that he has a shrine by himself. He's unique in that way all the shuhada are martyred and buried in one particular location but you have a shrine for Habib ibn Mudahir al-Asadi. Yes. Habib ibn Mudahir, 75 years old, one of the oldest people on the plains of Karbala on the day of Ashura. He was in Kufa. He sought to help Muslim ibn Aqil in every possible way. But unfortunately, the people turned against Muslim. And Habib ibn Mudahir didn't know what else to do. He was in the marketplace in Kufa, whereby what? Whereby he returns back to his house. He looks at his wife. His wife said, I have a feeling, I saw a dream that the son of Fatima is calling for you. He wants you. At that moment, he gets a letter. When he receives this letter, he opens the letter. It's a letter from Imam al Hussein. Do you know how Imam al Hussein addresses him? Imam says to the faqih Habib ibn Mudahir yes. he addresses him as the jurist as the knowledgeable man Habib ibn Mudahir reads the letter Imam says to him come towards me support me help me I will what I will guarantee you salvation that's the moment where his wife was proud of him she would say to him Habib go make me proud before Fatima to Zahra Habib ibn Mudahir decides to leave that night he says to his slave wait for me at the outskirts of Kufa at the gate where we live with a horse I will come so that the army of Ubaidillah does not see me I will come discreetly that night when he leaves he bids farewell to his wife he bids farewell to his son Qasim and he leaves he comes close to where the slave is standing the slave is holding the horse but he begins to hear the conversation between the slave and the horse. Allahu Akbar, the slave says to the horse, O oh horse, if my master doesn't come, if my master Habib does not take you, Wallah, I will ride you and go to Abu Abdullah. I want to fight with Hussein. Nothing will stop me from 
fighting with Aba Abdullah. Habib ibn Mudahir hears this. He begins to cry. Then he looks towards the direction of Karbala. He says, Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. Even the slaves, they want to fight. They want to sacrifice. He looks at his slave and says, May Allah give you reward. Thank you very much. You can now then return. The slave falls under his feet. Says, Habib, Habib, you are my master. I beg you, give me one thing. What do you want? What is it that you would like? He says, please don't leave me. Don't leave me. Let me come with you to Karbala. Let me fight alongside you. Let me give my life for Aba Abdullah. Look at the Hubbul Hussein. Look at the Ishq of Hussein in the hearts of the lovers of Hussein. Habib says, Very well, come with me. He arrives in Karbala. Narration says, On the 6th of Muharram, Imam al Hussein السلام, had distributed the banners, had distributed the flags, whom of whom should be in charge of his left side, the right side. But then he did not give the one in the middle. They said, Ya Aba Abdullah, who are you waiting for? He says, Don't worry, you'll see. All of a sudden, they call out, Habib ibn Mudahir has arrived. He has come. Imam al Hussein welcomes him. Imam al Hussein praises him. But there is one thing that Habib wants to do. Yes. He wants to greet the Ahl al Bayt. But before he greets the Ahl al Bayt, he is told, Habib, oh Habib, Zainab, the daughter of Ali, sends her salam for you. Allahu Akbar. Habib ibn Mudahir now wonders. He then, according to the riwayah, falls on the ground. He takes the soil from the ground and he starts to hit himself with it. He puts the soil on his head. He puts the soil on his face. He says, Who am I that the daughter of Ali says salam to me? I don't deserve the daughter of the, the salam of the daughter of Ali. Then he goes to Towards, uh, then he goes towards the family, the Ahl al Bayt, the women. He says, Assalamu alaikum, ya Ahl al Bayt al Nabu. Assalamu alaikum, ya Banat Rasulullah. He greets them, they send the salam towards him. Habib ibn Mutahir now is waiting for Shahada. He's waiting for martyrdom. When it was the day of Ashura, when it was time time for him to fight like a courageous ferocious lion of god he's in the battlefield he fights he fights that moment he remembers one side you know what he did before he fought he saw his uh, friend muslim ibn awsaja on the plains of karbala breathing his last moments he came to muslim he sat next to muslim he said to him you are my friend you are dear to my heart i wish i was living Long, so that I will do whatever you ask me. Uh, Muslim said, Oh Habib, yes, I want you to do one thing for me. Uh, what is it, oh Muslim? What do you want me to do? Uh, Muslim looks at Habib and says, Alayka bihad. Oh Habib, please, please, one thing, one request, one will. What is it? He points towards Aba Abdullah. He says, Habib, please, please, make sure that you die before him. Make sure that you give your life for him. Muslim gives that will. Habib says, of course, of course. That was playing in his minds when he was fighting so courageously until they surrounded Habib and he falls onto the ground calling out, Assalamu alayka, ibn Rasul. His soul departs from his body. Imam al Hussein comes next to him. He begins to weep. He looks at Habib ibn Mudahir, that Shaykh of Bani Asad, that individual who is so noble. He says to him, Oh Habib, 
may Allah's mercy be upon you. You used to complete the Quran entirely in one night. Uh, Habib Ibn Mudahir's head is that is placed on a spear. The spear is being carried on towards the streets of Kufa. The son of his Qasim comes out. He sees the head of Habib on a spear. He goes to the man. He says, oh man, I beg you, give me this head. The man says, why? He says, this is the head of my father, Habib Ibn Mudahir. I want to take the head towards my mother. I want to show her the head of my father, Habib. The man says, no, no, I'm not giving you the head. I have to gain the reward from the Khalifa. This man, Qasim, comes back. He says to his mother, mother, I saw the head of our father on a spear. This mother, this wife of Habib, then she looks towards Medina. What does she say? She says, Assalamu alaykum ya Fatima al-Zahra. As if she is saying, Oh Fatima, on the day of Qiyamah, I gave my husband for your son Hussein. We say to her, Your husband's head was carried on a spear. Tell me what they did to the head of Aba Abdullah. It was next to the head of Habib that it was being carried. The Ruaya says, Once a man with the head of Imam dropped it on the ground. Then the soldiers said, Oh, horses, trample on the head of Hussein. They crushed the cheeks of Hussein. They would stamp on the head of Hussein. Yazid would poke the eyes and the lips of Hussein. ألا لعنة الله على القوم الظالمين وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي من قلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين وإنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم العز الأجل الأكرم إلهي بفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها يا الله يا رب العالمين tonight we remembered Imam Sahib al-Asri wa-Zaman. Ya Allah, make us of those who serve Imam al-Mahdi. Ajjal Allahu faraja. Ya Allah, we beg you and beseech you to make us of those who are actively waiting for him, remembering him, establishing all that needs to be done in honor of the 12th Holy Imam. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, grant us a tawfiq to see the Imam of our time. Ya Allah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, grant us the opportunity to visit the shrine of Sayyid al-Shuhada and to attain his shafa'a on the day of Qiyamah. Raise your hands. Let's pray all together as we have remembered the Imam of our time. These are moments to truly, truly make our hearts in the remembrance of the awaited Savior, Al-Qa'im min Ali Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma kulli waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abai fi hadhihi al-sa'a wa fi kulli sa'a. وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ومن ماتوا على الإيمان وإلى أرواح العلماء والشهداء وخدمة الحسين رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة but before it the loudest of صلوات